But no sooner had the images begun to circulate than rumours spread, first amongst the alternative media, active on the internet that have sprung up to counter the one-sided reporting of the major networks like Fox, CNN and Al Jazeera, then even amongst the more established press that suggested the whole event was a setup. On closer analysis of the footage, it appeared that rather than a joyful mass spontaneously taking out their suppressed rage at an oppressor, a small group of Iraqis, assisted by American Marines on order from higher command, took advantage of the square's location just across the road from the two hotels where most of the journalists were stationed to topple the statue as a managed piece of propaganda. Uh, writing for The Guardian, James Meek has cynically put it, the real rendezvous on April 9 was between the invading troops and the resident foreign media. These images still circulate as emblems of the war in Iraq, long after the monument itself was destroyed, standing on the one hand for the liberation of Baghdad and on the other for the start of American occupation. Both versions suggest the power of representation as it is utilized in the immaterial stage of the global media. It would seem that the document has here surpassed the monument as a meaning device of unrivaled power. Final, final image. Any artist working in the public sphere today must necessarily take into account the new conditions in which monuments function and images circulate. I'll leave you with one last image of a work which I think draws together the threads about which I'm speaking. This is a still from a 72 minute film by the American born Paris based artist Eric Baudelaire. Baudelaire's film is neither narrative nor documentary, but shows what appears to be an ordinary action taking place in a Parisian metro station. From a single fixed position, we have an angled view of the platform and one of its exits. We witness passengers coming and going, but most especially, we watch as a bill poster pastes up a billboard on an ornate, in an ornate gilt frame, one that typically is used for the large-scale advertising that is such a feature of any major city's transportation system. This film is shot in real time, so what we see takes place as a single sequence of events. Strangely though, we don't watch the single application of one image, but instead follow the continuous posting of four in images, one on top of the other, that show, and you can see it in, this, in, this, in the shot here, it's probably about the, the, the middle image, um, that show a car on a street in the city, which then dramatically explodes into flames, and in the final photograph is left a charred hulk, the victim perhaps of a terrorist bombing. An action such as this, caught as it is on camera, would in my mind be a perfect one-day sculpture, pitched to invoke anxiety by reminding us of the dangers of city living in places wracked by acts of motivated violence. It casts a pall over our sense of personal security, bringing home the potential risks associated with contemporary existence. But presented here as an image, that is not the real thing, he didn't go off and blow up a car, uh, and witness to the studied disinterest of the station's occupants and the mundane actions of the bill poster who's indifferent to the image he is erecting. Our fears of the event are undermined. Seen secondhand as a filmic record of a temporal event that itself is removed by appearing as a series of photographs, we can hardly be sure that especially as the place depicted is uncannily called Erewhon, referencing, of course, Samuel Butler's fictive utopia for literally from spelling the word nowhere backwards. In other words, this is a completely fake setup. What Baudelaire seems to capture is the double crisis of our contemporary moment. Both the real danger that besets us as conflicts multiply in an increasingly divided world and the disarming effects of our mediated existence, where representations dislocate us from reality and suspend time unnaturally. Baudelaire's work is capable of emblem 
implementizing this because he uses both still and moving image, real and staged actions, to create a work that's poised uncomfortably between event and document. Here, we too are poised in a very peculiar place and moment, one that seems to go on indefinitely, or at least the 72 minutes of the film's duration, but which also posits the possibility of tragic arrest. The idea that something happened somewhere and we're being asked to serve as its witnesses. Baudelaire's film is, I think, a charged counter to, to the deceptions of the mass media, especially because it reproduces their forms. Displaced from the prevailing model of the permanent monument, it is nevertheless a reprise of art in the public realm. It serves then as a fitting example of the new work which is possible if we rethink Krauss's model. So what we're seeing here then is a set of operations that engage the other coordinates of the monument, action, event, and document, which still position the work within the logical framework of a very long tradition. Yet Baudelaire's decision to work in a temporal mode to track the fake progress of social beings in an everyday situation is the product of a specific historical rupture in a post 9-11 world where representations of horrific acts and human suffering are continuously available and the workings of power to control how we receive them are ever more manifest, it's perhaps telling that an artist should seek a way to operate that avoids the presumptions of permanence and serves as a knowing counter to the, manip to the manipulations of the mass media to deliver a visual conundrum that toys with our, our abilities to remember. So I imagine, and this is my conclusion, that this is the territory that the One Day Sculpture Project will endeavour to mine, calling on artists to create something memorable, but not just for the camera, that may only survive a day, but which will live on in the project's documentation. If successful, I think we'll witness a new mode of public art that is attuned to its times and aware of its history that will cannily navigate the tricky space between event and document, and which most especially will be alert to everyday situations where people grapple with their surroundings and their circumstances. That's it. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Just a clarification at the moment, and then we'll discuss some of these ideas later. Any quick clarification questions? Thank you so much, Tina, and uh, it gives me great